Hello, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today I'm just going to do a quick update on my attempts to uh, improve the water situation on the allotments. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you what I've done on my plot and hopefully uh, this is going to improve things no end for spring and summer. So my best chance to collect water is at the polytunnel. And when we first got it, we put this gutter on, which has worked really well, but it was a kind of improvised solution uh, using bits and pieces that we had lying around. Uh, and I've got a previous video, which I'll put in the show notes that shows how we constructed that. But uh, this time we've done a slightly better job. So it's a much nicer gutter. Um, it's supported on these little fence posts and I've uh, hammered in some some fence supports down at the bottom there. I'll just show you the detail at the bottom. Now in order to get the gutter as close as possible to the uh, edge of the polytunnel I put this little piece of wood in here as well on top of these supports and it actually you know makes the whole thing really rigid um, and supports the, the gutter in really well. To attach the gutter to the piece of wood I screwed some um, I screwed through the gutter in uh, and put a rubber washer underneath these um, metal washers and so that seals everything really nicely so there should be no leaks there. In order to attach this polythene skirt which runs into the gutter I put double sided sticky tape uh, on the polythene, the polythene of the uh, polytunnel, stuck the plastic skirt to the double sided sticky tape and then uh, Debbie and I, we put um, a strip of polytunnel repair tape over the join which is just here to uh, waterproof that. So hopefully the double sided sticky tape never gets wet. It is waterproof though uh, and it also uh, doesn't degrade in sunlight and with some evidence that that's true because we did the same thing on the other side. Then in the gutter itself we put some more double sided sticky tape in the base of the gutter so we then put the uh, skirt that we'd attached into there, stuck it down with the poly dual sided sticky tape and then on the inside here of the gutter we again sealed the whole thing with some polythene repair tape. So maybe a bit overkill but it makes a really nice neat job and it works really well. We've just tested it and got a pretty good flow rate, so about 10 litres per minute. Um, the gutter will take that and works pretty well. Now 10 litres a minute is a heck of a lot of water so no problem there. So at this end I've just got this little uh, pipe flange there which uh, I've screwed into the wood there and I've sealed around here with this waterproof adhesive and then I've got this little um, landscape fabric peg just with this little um, loop around it just to hold it up a little bit it just pops in there and that just stops leaves and other debris going down the tube so that works really well and then I've got a little pipe here that runs into these water butts and the water butt lids are inverted so they capture water themselves and so they don't blow away in the wind and they're held down by bricks the bricks sit on the little table there and there's the water butt and these are 300 litre water butts so they're quite substantial and they're linked together here so one overflows into the other. Some people attach them at the bottom and uh, I actually think it's better this way because these are dip tanks um, so you dip your watering can in to fill it, which is by far the fastest way to water that I've found, much faster than watering by hose pipe. Um, and obviously you want a dip tank to be as full as possible. If you link the two together you get two half full tanks, whereas if you do it this way you get one full tank and one empty tank. It's a lot easier to use a full tank as a dip tank, so that's the reason I've done it that way. Again this end was kind of cobbled together so the water ends up in this tank which overflows into this dip tank as well, uh, basically the same arrangement. Um, and in order to get water out of here, in order to fill my other water butts, 
uh, I got this little bilge pump here which works by hand and I can pump a fair amount through that it only takes about a minute uh, or two to uh, empty this tank and uh, fill one of these or you know not fill obviously but uh, third full or something one of those so on the greenhouse roof I've put a little downpipe on this pre-existing gutter uh, blank the end off there again I've just used this waterproof adhesive to seal things another one of these little caps just stops the falling through uh, an old sardine can I think it is uh, to make the gutter end um, at the downpipe interface basically and uh, put some cable ties on there and again an old leaky water book that we found I sealed that up and uh, cut the top off it because again it's too low down to use to fill a watering can but again it's a great dip tank so that's perfect another dip tank there but this one is high enough because it's so small to uh, to put a bottle under most of the bottles that I put under are just the small bottles that I use and small watering cans for watering the greenhouse and the coal frame widths I've also put these little tiny gutters uh, and these just capture the water and overflow into buckets these there's not a huge amount of water that you get this way but it's really cheap um, and I tend to use these buckets for um, water that I'm going to use just to sort of do wash carrots and wash beetroot and things like that so it is useful to have a little bit of spare water around it's already in a bucket so uh, works really well for that purpose and I'm not wasting good quality water just to do the cleaning so that's pretty much it for this video uh, just a quick update um, we've improved things quite a lot on the allotment so let's think we probably could capture last year uh, just over a cubic meter of water and um, we only had about four square meters of roof area capturing water now we've got somewhere in the region of 25 square meters capturing water so that's a massive improvement um, and we can capture about two and a half maybe three um, cubic meters of water and the beauty of this setup now is we can expand it thinking of moving these um, water butts uh, to Jenny's plot and then putting some more of those big 300 litre dip tanks thinking in there. maybe putting an IBC in here uh, where these compost bins are um, and raising it up on uh, paving, not paving slabs, breeze blocks uh, and obviously I can't fill it because I haven't got anything high enough to feed into it but I can pump the water so I get a little electric pump and a battery uh, and I can pump the water from these tanks here uh, into there over winter so I, again I could store another um, a cubic meter there so that would end up I'd have about three and a half cubic meters which is nowhere near enough to survive without tap water but we do have tap water on the site uh, for the spring and the summer so it's not too bad um, but it gives me some um, kind of safety net against hose pipe bands and uh, you know other sort of water shortages uh, it means I've got plenty of water at the beginning and the end of the season it basically just insulates me from the worry that I'm going to run out of water which I've had a few times this year and there we go pretty pleased about the whole thing got loads of things growing of course and uh, so water's still a big issue for me um, don't need much water in December and January uh, but yeah, water uh, demand starts picking up a bit in February and it goes a bit crazy in March and April so really nice to have this in place now and hopefully these will all everything will all be nice and full by uh, the time things start picking up in March and April so with that I'll say goodbye and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.